Thank you. Uh, first of all, let me welcome everybody here today and, and let me set your minds at peace. You know, there's an old adage that says, the more enduring the tribute, the shorter should be the prelude. I expect this statue to last hundreds of years, which means this should be a very, very brief ceremony this morning. The, uh, let me first of all begin by telling you a little bit about the, the genesis of this, uh, this effort. You know, it actually began a discussion about a, a decade ago. Tom Stanton and I were playing golf, and, and we were cruising along, and one or the other of us raised the issue that we need to find some way to recognize Doug in a way that 200 years from now or 300 years from now, people would recognize his contributions to the creation of this university. And I just want to pause here for a second and tell you the one regret I have this morning is that my friend Tom Stanton isn't with us because he would enjoy being here very, very much. Now, having said that, let me first recognize Alex Pakovich, the, uh, the, the, uh, the sculptor. Alex, where, Alex, come up here and let, let us applaud. Now, the applaud will be more meaningful when we unveil the sculptor, but, but uh, thank you very much for your work and your effort on this, Alex. I think you guys are going to see in a couple of minutes, it's, it's truly a work of art. Um, I am very aware of the following. I'm very aware that this is the second unveiling of a statue on this spot. I'm also hopeful that it will be the last unveiling of a statue on this spot. Now let me get sentimental for just a second and, and tell you that early on I, I asked, was, was asked by a student, I spoke to a class, and I would mentioned that we were going to honor President Smith at some point with a statue on campus. He came up to me and he said, well, why are we honoring President Smith? And I said, well, let me tell you about honoring the founding president. Many presidents in the years ahead will serve this institution, and I hope it'll serve the institution well, but there's only one founding president. There's only one man who stands here when there's absolutely nothing here and has the vision upon which subsequent administrations can build. There's only one person that will conceptualize, develop, and implement the schematic for the university. There's only one person who will hire that initial faculty and the staff and design the buildings and think about the multitude of students that will come. There's only one person that will lend us all the vision that essentially will sustain this place for centuries. And that person was Doug Smith. You know, the last 14 years as we've done things, whether they've been buildings or programs, I'll confess to you, the one thought that always goes through my mind is, don't disappoint Doug and what we're doing. <laughs> I do have to tell you this. Last month, Doug and Adele and Larry and Barbara Jackson, Larry was a former president of Lander, University. We all had lunch downtown, me and Folly. And I told the group that we were going to have next month an unveiling of a statue honoring Doug. And Doug says, wonder what it'll look like. <laughs> and Larry leaned across the table and says, well, I hope the hell it looks like you. <laughs> well, let's see. Ian, Walt, will you come up with me and let's unveil this thing.
you will note that that is the Francis Marion College medallion he's wearing in the statue. Doug, over to you, my friend. I don't trust my memory anymore, um, so I've got this. <laughs> well, Mr. President, and members of the board, and my family, and uh, all my friends out there, and gee, a good crowd has gathered since we started this. Well, this is my first time to see this uh, handsome likeness of the <laughs> first president of this fine institution that was uh, done by our own Alex Palkovich. I have many glowing remarks that I'm going to make later about the image that we see here, but the first I have several family members I must uh, introduce, and they can stand up or wave their hands or something to big knowledge. From Memphis, my niece, Mrs. Uh, Sally Feller Hamby, and also from Memphis, my nephew, David Roberts. The hands are up. And I have three from Alabama. Niece, Ms. Jean Rice Randall from Huntsville, and my nephew, Jack Feller from Birmingham, and daughter, my grandniece, Mary Ann Feller, who's a graduate student at Auburn. And from Kingston, Tennessee, just across the Clinch River and over the ridge from where I grew up in Tennessee, my nephew, Gerald Smith, and also from Tennessee, my nephew, Ben Smith, from Harriman, my birthplace, which was founded in 1890, only 28 years before I was born. <laughs> and after 100 years, the old Smith house still stands. It's a bit weathered, sort of the way I feel. <laughs> I've run out of nieces and nephews, but I still have five more family members to introduce. Closer to home from Columbia, my son Walt Smith and his Daughter and son, my two grandchildren, Miller and Hayden. Until uh, October 1st, 2012, they were Florence residents, but now live in Columbia. My son and his wife, Ian and Jeannie Smith. And uh, Jeannie is with my loving daughter-in-law. Their children, Lauren and Brewster, well, Lauren couldn't be here. She's working today. She happens to be working in Tokyo this morning. And Brewster from Charleston and his good friend, Sonia Eckhouse. Shania, Shania Eckhouse. <laughs> It's the first time we've met. <laughs> I've, been, I've been practicing her name for several days, but I forget it. <laughs> well, that end, ends the introduction uh, of my family. And it could have been lo much longer because I have a lot more nieces and nephews who aren't here. They promised to come for my next statue unveiling. Now, when you celebrate art, you celebrate the artist. Alex Palkovich is one of Florence's real treasures. Not only is he a talented sculptor, uh, Alex is also an inspiring teacher who can bring, the, uh, bring out the artistic talents of people of all ages. And I tell you, Florence and our area of the state are being greatly enriched by Alex's work. And so Alex, I consider 
it's an honor to have you spend so much time working on this statue. And Alex, I'm glad you decided to give me about, I think it's about 10 more inches of height. <laughs> I've always wanted to be over six feet tall. <laughs> now, about this particular location, it's perfect. It's perfect. And that calls for a short, short story, Fred. In mid-April 1970, when I was preparing to leave Salisbury, Maryland, Salisbury State College, and return to South Carolina, to Florence, to start a new four-year college, I decided one day to fly down to Florence before coming here to begin work and meet with the students at the two-year regional campus. I wanted to determine uh, what the prospective Francis Marion students thought about the soon-to-be new school, what they hoped it would be, and to determine if they planned to enroll, or would they follow the established pattern and transfer at the end of their semester or the sophomore year to USC or another college. Well, the answer is they stayed. Some, somebody was convincing, they stayed. We met on the patio behind Stokes Hall, just a few short feet behind us here is where we met that day. I described as best I could the curriculum that would be offered in the building program that we hoped to initiate. Occasionally, I would put down there to the south and uh, indicate on those acres what would, which were to become our campus, where we could see pine trees and where old furrows left from the last planting by Mr. Walter Wallace and his helpers remained visible. On that day, we imagined all those fine new buildings. Look back there. That's what we were imagining at that time. Fine new buildings, sidewalks, streets, playing fields. Now that was 1970, 43 years ago and we were dreaming. But today we can see that those dreams became reality. So here back of Stokes Hall is where it began, where students first became involved in shaping their new college. <clears throat> and now all of, all of us old timers, some of whom here are here today, glad to recognize those faces, we can square our shoulders and say it's even better than we could ever have imagined. It really is. In 1970, it was wonderful to be at a college that was in a startup mode. People were flexible. Territory had not been staked out yet. It was exciting to come to work each morning. And I'm delighted to report, as of course an unbiased observer, that the startup outlook still prevails. It's not finished yet. I appreciate the very success successful efforts of all who were betting on Alex in this artistic endeavor. I know that some unwavering force had to be involved along the way. And I know that Fred Carter has a sense of history. He <clears throat> and his faculty and his staff are continuing the dream of this institution. And I know, and I know that not too many academic types leave bronze statues to future generations. I'm pretty much conscious of that fact. Now I can be sure that FMU students henceforth will know who Doug Smith was. And they will know that he was that <clears throat> handsome six foot eight, <laughs> <clears throat> athletic looking type, 
<laughs> President of Francis Marion University, whose statue they pass each day when they enter or leave Stokes Hall. Alex, you have assured me a place in history. And I will end my remarks with this question for Alex. Will bronze last for a thousand years? <laughs> Thank you all for coming. <clears throat> Very nice. You know, that really concludes the formal part of the presentation today, but I am compelled to add one other comment that my friend Senator Leatherman will appreciate. No public monies or tuition went into the design, construction, or acquisition of this uh, statue. All dollars were raised privately. Thank you. Have a good day. Come up and congratulate Doug and the family, please.